Welcome to the Beast Rider family where social media engagement is encouraged. I am your host, Ryan Sakamoto, and today we are going to be talking about the news that just broke in regards to strong safety Tarverius Moore and top-rated offensive tackle, backup offensive tackle in Justin School. Both those players are now likely lost for the season, if you were to ask me. Uh, one lost to the season due to a torn Achilles, the other one lost due to a torn ACL. Now, this has been a chronic problem for the San Francisco 49ers as of late. The injury bug has been hit hard. The team is now in dire need of depth. That's maybe the reason why they signed Tony Jefferson. We talked about that yesterday, but it all makes sense now why the move was made. And before we go ahead and do that, I just want to say thank you to each and every one of you for subscribing to my channel. We're just going to go ahead and dive right into it. But before we go ahead and do that, I just want to go ahead and uh, let you guys know that we have a lot of cool things coming um, here in the Beast Rider family. We have Mike Schumann hopping on the show at 11 a.m. So just about two hours from now, he'll be hopping on the show uh, on the live stream and he'll be talking to us, reliving his 49ers history. Also, if you guys have yet to subscribe to my channel, go ahead and do so because you'll be entered for our Family Friday giveaways, which includes really cool gifts uh, like this Justin Smith autograph frame. So be sure to go ahead and like our channel and we will go ahead and go over the details as to who the winner will be. Once we hit 3000 subscribers, we're almost there and we'll get off and running on that. So let's go ahead and talk about, well, shoot. Let's talk about Tarverius Moore. All right. Tarverius Moore was lost to the season yesterday, in my opinion, now has been reported. He's been lost to the season, but again, this is what I do. I'm not some trained. He's likely lost for the season. By the time he returns, he's going to have to open up that 21 day window for him to return anyways, by then it'll probably be like week 12, week 13, somewhere in there. And let's face it, if Tony Jefferson is there and he was signed, he's not going to be there to ride the pine. And if he's playing well, he's going to be as the entrenched top rated backup behind Jimmy Ward and Tragossi Tart. So with that being said, it's likely it's likely Tony Jefferson's to lose as the top rated uh, top backup safety. Um, let's just go ahead and talk about that. Let's get to your questions. Uh, Josh Hutchins says, this is getting old. It is. Patrick Ribes says, Beast already three major injuries. Yep. It's not looking good. Uh, Keith Harding says, not a big deal. So Keith Harding from Facebook, uh, do yourself a favor, man. If you want to be entered for our Beast Rider family giveaways, join us in the Beast Rider family here on YouTube. If you have a Facebook account, obviously you can, uh, you probably have a YouTube account. Odds are everyone has a YouTube account. Uh, just go ahead and subscribe. So you'll be entered to score free Beast Rider family swag. Um, you're saying it's not a big deal. I think it's a huge deal because in the NFL, depth is of the utmost importance. And when you don't have a safety, especially at safety positions, you know, a lot of these safeties are interchangeable. I talked about this yesterday on my live stream in regards to Richard Sherman possibly being moved to safety and why I don't think he has the legs to do it. Um, going back to Tar Tarverius Moore, though, strong safety. Do I think he has the lateral agility to go ahead and make plays? Yes, he's very fast. He's very savvy that way. He does miss a lot of tackles in the open space. But with that being said, losing Tarverius Moore, who's a third round pick, right? And they acquired that third round pick through the Trent Brown trade, if you guys remember, right? So it's a huge deal. It's a huge deal because, again, here he is. He's a 2018 third round pick, if I'm not mistaken, right? 2018, 2019, 20. He's in the contract here and he's now lost for the season. He's not going to get that fifth year option because obviously he's a third round pick. So are they going to resign him next year? I don't know. I don't know. Are they going to re-sign a guy who's coming off a torn Achilles? And for those who don't know what a torn Achilles is, I'm going to break it down for you brick by brick, layer by layer. Uh, the torn Achilles, having the Achilles, it's a tendon. All right. First and foremost, it's not a bone. It's, it's, it's something like that, right? It's a tendon, right? So the Achilles heel is a tendon and it's the largest and strongest tendon in the human body. Um, when the, when the, so to put it in layman terms for you guys, when the muscles flex, and your calf muscles flex and you and you go on your tippy toes. Well, the Achilles tendon pulls on the heel, which makes it the movement that allows us to stand on our toes uh, when walking, when running, when jumping, when jogging. Despite its strength, the Achilles tendon is also vulnerable to injury. So uh, due to its limited blood supply and the high tensions placed on it, it can really cause some major concerns, which is why I think this is a season ending injury for Tarverius Moore. Uh, we have Michael Miller hopping onto the live stream. Michael Miller... How are you doing today, my man? 
the 49ers need to fire all their trainers, all their strength and conditioning coaches, all that. They need to get rid of them. They need to go out and they need to overpay and rob any other team that doesn't have that many injuries every year of their people. So, it's, so, it's, yeah. Yeah. Well, Jack that, York, that, you are 1 million percent to blame for this. Well, that's what I was, th- you know, you hit it on the nail. I was going to go ahead and dive into it, but you already brought it up. Uh, the strength and conditioning coaches should be held accountable for this. Also, not only the strength and conditioning coaches, but also Kyle Shanahan as well, because Kyle Shanahan is the one pushing these players past their limits. And again, it comes down to muscle memory. I talked about this on my earlier live streams. If you don't have the muscle memory to go ahead and do what you're doing, injuries are going to cause a concern. And I said this Pre-COVID, when COVID was hitting, I said, watch, a lot of these star players are going to go down to injury because they're not used to coming off, working out and training on their own and then hitting preseason and then, you know, with limited preseason work and then going straight into the season. Yeah, players are going to get hurt. That's like me trying to train for a bodybuilding competition and I just took a year off. There's no way I can have that strength, have that lateral. There's no way. It's impossible. Now, can it come back? Yes, because it's muscle memory. It's like riding a bike, but at the end of the day, it takes time. There's a process involved in doing this. It's a science. And if you're not able to do that, if you don't have the allocated time to go ahead and do that, and now you're pushing your players forward to do certain things and certain aspects of certain drills, when really their muscle memory isn't connected with what their line of work that they're accustomed to doing at that point in their career or in their offseason training program, then injuries are, are going to happen. If you look around the NFL, like you said, how many of these players or how many of these teams have injuries like this? Now, now football's a contact sport, Okay. But losing Justin School to a torn ACL again, right? Another ACL player. This is an a, ongoing problem. I spoke and I keep in touch with every every single strength and conditioning coach that has worked with the 49ers since I became a beat writer. We talk, okay? That's truth be told, all right? And we talk <laughs> on a number of different occasions. And let me just tell you this. I, I'm not going to put any names out there, but I will say this. I, it is a problem. It is a problem. I mean, and, if they were doing better stretching and stuff like that before practice and all this, it'd be a lot less injuries too, wouldn't it? Yeah, exactly. And and it goes back to how players stretch, how they prepare. Now it falls on the players too. You know, I watch practice every single day when you know when I was there, and a lot of times these players think stretching is just going through the motions. You know, I see it. I mean, I play, I played it. So it's like. Why would you want to do that? Well, obviously it's going to, it's going to take a toll on your body at some point, you know, you can do the karaoke drill, you know, and then line up on the side field, do all that, do all their stretching, um, work, um, the hamstring work and all, you know, but aside from that, you know, they need to really put in the work and on the stretching portion of the drills. Otherwise, if you don't take that seriously, by the time you hit your mid season stride and you're getting chewed out by the coach, because you just got beat deep because you weren't warmed up enough. Hey, that's on you. And that's why these injuries are so common with the San Francisco 49ers, in my opinion, is because Kyle Shanahan has to be, has to be, there has to be some blame on Kyle Shanahan. Now, strength and conditioning coach, you can put the blame on them too, because that's their job. Their job is to make sure that these injuries don't occur. But injuries do happen. So well, you I can, can put it on the players too, because the players need to make sure that they're doing this too. And if the strength and conditioning coaches ain't making them do it, then it's, it's everybody. It's on Kyle, it's on all of them. It's everybody. It's everybody. But at the end of the day, it's almost like, okay, a 20 ATL, majority of those, 70% of those are non-contact injuries. The range, the average range of torn ACLs occurring is in the 15 to 25 range. So when you look at that and you take it a step further, peeling back another layer of the onion to get to the core, torn ACLs happen all the time. You know, Thomas Davis of the Carolina Panthers had three torn ACLs. He's the first player in NFL history to come back successfully from three torn ACLs. How many players can come back successfully from one? I'd Not say very probably many. So this is an issue. This is an issue. This is an issue. And, and these torn ACLs, I mean, we, we blame Trent Balky for this torn ACL, but it's been a common theme around the NFL, and it seems to be uh, lingering with the San Francisco 49ers. Uh, Nick Bosa, torn ACL, right? Uh, didn't Solomon Thomas have a torn ACL or whatever he had? Torn, torn ACL. ACL. Torn ACL. Yeah. ACL is the anterior crucial ligament, right? It's a very, it, it, it's, it's no joke. It's something That's that happens. behind the kneecap, right? Exactly. So um, it, these injuries are going to occur, but at the same time, it's like, why are these injuries occurring more often with the San Francisco 49ers? This is a chronic problem and no pun intended, but it's a chronic condition for the team. They have to get it right. And who do you, who is to blame? Oh, well, and, 
you know, Kyle Shanahan going record while injuries happen, you know, maybe you, Kyle there, Shanahan. There's other either. teams like what Tampa Bay, how injury was their team last year? Exactly. How injury was uh, Arizona Cardinals, not really. Exactly. I mean, there's tons of teams that are not getting these injuries, but then there's six or eight teams and we leading them in tremendous injuries all season long. Yeah, it, it's definitely a problem. It's definitely a problem and it needs to be cleaned up. If it was, if it was me, now I don't know internally what's going on there, right? I don't. I, I mean, but I will do. I do know this. I do know if all these ACL injuries, you know, torn MCL, LCL, you know, whatever the case may be, right? High ankle sprains. Something has to be done to the practice portion of whatever it is you're trying to accomplish and be like, okay, let's sit down. Okay, we understand the X's and those. We understand we have to get these guys all on the same page. But you know, the best availability is durability, right? If you're not durable, it doesn't matter how good you are because you won't see the field anyways. So let's try to get these guys in the right mindset. Should we take a step back or two steps back and say, hey, look, like let's just give these guys, you know, kind of like a rest break, right? Like let's get, you know, Trent Williams gets gets rest breaks because he's a veteran. But why not Maybe in today's society, in today's age of you know age of information and how everything, how we're learning and how everything's coming together, is say, hey, look, like maybe we should just take a, you know a walkthrough. Let's do another walkthrough today, just to get the you know to make sure that we're not pushing our players too hard. Because what's going to happen is, you know, if you noticed, the players that got hurt were top backups in line for starting positions. Tarverius Moore was in the contract year. So these guys are going to push their limits because they know they need to get their bread because odds are they're not going to get a second contract. They got to get their payday and that's why they're pushing it. Exactly. And this is the reason why I would, if I was a coach or if I was a GM, I'd be like, okay, we know Tarverius Moore is in the contract year. We know whatever we tell him, he's not going to listen to us. He's going to want to full blown all the time because that's what, you know, that's why we drafted him. That's what we want him to do. But as a coach and as a GM, we have to go ahead and take a step back and pull him back. But hey, uh, just take a break right here. Uh, what's going on, coaches? My, yeah, you're, you're fine, man. We just don't, we just don't, you know, we want, we want to overdo it. You know, we see this is why I hope the Niners are watching this. Well, That's I'm sure they are. I'm, I'm sure they are. But well, uh, I, I guarantee they're watching it. Yeah. yeah. It, it's just, it, it, it's just, it's very, very, uh, it's, it's very, very uh, interesting to me. And like, like I said, I talk to a lot of the strength and conditioning coaches, not just from the 49ers, from other NFL teams, okay? And we're good friends, all right? We talk. We talk, we talk, we talk. And, uh, you know, they know I know my, I might, when I talk about, you know, well, injuries. I mean, look, at, look at what you did. Well, I mean, you, show, show your guns. I mean, they know you know <laughs> what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just. We've You've been, been training for long enough to know what you're doing. Yeah, and they know I work with the players in the off season too. So this mm -hmm. is like you know they they know these. This is not something. It's not a secret. Um, but what I will say this is, at some point, where do we have? Where do we draw the line and say, okay, well, what you know, someone has to be the man responsible for these injuries. Now, ultimately, like you said. It's a team sport, so it falls on the head coach, it falls on the players, and it also falls on the uh, strength and conditioning coach as well, mm -hmm. right? But ultimately, like you said, I'm echoing off your analysis. Why does it happen more to the San Francisco 49ers more than any other NFL team? Or it appears that way. Now, we can run the statistics on it, and maybe because we follow 49ers more closely than other NFL teams that we're just kind of having that bias, like, yeah, you know, well, that's only the news we care about, so that's only the news that we pay attention to. But realistically... Nah, because even the national media is pulling on this thread right now and saying, you know what? The Niners are, have been hit hard by the injury bug. No other team has been hit harder by the injury bug. Why is it? Are they cursed? No, they're not cursed. They have freaking five Super Bowl rings. They're not cursed. No. It's the, it goes back to the strength and conditioning coaches and the coaching staff at hand and whether or not how they're going to you know, formulate their offseason workout program. Two players went down yesterday. Two. Two so in this, one, one day. Yes. So this is what this is. It's like a virus. Okay. It's like a virus for anyone who wants to know what's going on here. It's like a virus. So let me tell you, I'm just gonna put it out right now. There are probably one or two more players that are going to go down to injury because what, what I'm, what I'm thinking right now is there's players right now, as we speak, who are probably like feeling some kind of pop, feeling some kind of like, uh, something's not right. And they're going to push themselves today, tomorrow, later this week, and they're going to go down to injury. Yeah, I just keep keep pushing it. I mean, 
you know, maybe they Jed will listen and Je, uh, uh, John Lynch. And I mean, I just, we got to do something. We got to get new guys in there. We got to switch something up. It's just, you know, yeah. we can't go through a, a season after season after season like this. I right. Mean, it's just, it's just yeah. ridiculous. Uh, thank yeah. you, Spencer Bailey, for the super chat and super sticker. If you like the work, like the channel, like the Beast Rider movement, we are striving to push here in the Beast Rider family. Consider sending me a super chat. Thank you, Spencer Bailey. He was the last Beast Rider family giveaway winner. Um, he says, Rice Krispie Treats on me. Hope that all is well, Beast. Thank you so much. Yeah, I love Rice Krispie Treats, man. Yeah. Uh, it's always good. Um, so, yeah, let's go ahead and talk about it. Uh, Keith Harding, who said it's not a big deal, he says the signing of Tony um, – Tony Jefferson, I think he means Tony Jefferson, and drafting the kid from UC, there's our depth. That's depth, but Tarvarius more understands the system more, no pun intended. Also, I mean, he comes Tony in Jefferson as like the nickelback sometimes. Yeah, and Tony Jefferson's also coming off a torn ACL, right? He ain't playing, uh, he got hurt in 2019. So he's also coming off a torn ACL. So do you trust this coaching staff, not, not coaching staff, but the strength and conditioning staff to really get him – game ready coming off a torn ACL when one player just <laughs> who we're on talking about is a torn ACL. Interesting. And let's go back on Justin school's high school career. Cause everyone wants to go back and talk about, well, Nick Bosa has been injury prone since high school is Justin school injury prone since high school. If not, there's some, there's some cost from he has not there. been injured. Well, there you go. There you go. So the common denominator is what the strength and conditioning coaches, right? The, yeah. the co now again, like Kyle Shanahan could be telling his players, Hey, let's just take a break. But odds are knowing Kyle Shanahan the way I know Kyle Shanahan, he's always all gas, no break. He's like, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Which is good. I think that's a good thing. I don't think it, I'm not, I'm not saying it's bad. I, I, I probably coach the same way, but at the same time, you gotta be mindful and smart enough to say, Hey, look, I got to pull you back a little bit, kid. And I've done it when I coached, you know, when I coached at Stratford, you know, um, we had players and we went undefeated. But there are times during the year where I said, you know what, like, you know, come out. I need you to come out real fast. And like, why coach? And they think like you're doing like you're 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 blaming them or that they're doing something wrong when you say no. Like, I know what you're doing, man. Like you're going really difficult. I just don't want you to get hurt this week. So we need you to rest up and just, just sit back a little bit. And you can tell you can tell players getting tired and the way they're 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 you know, the way they're running. It's just kind of it just you can tell you can just tell. And that's why you say, you know what, I'm not going to risk it. It's practice. Like yeah. Allen Iverson, we're not talking about game. We're talking about practice, right? So same concept applies in a sense where it's up to the coaches to pull back the players because the players aren't going to pull back themselves. The pull the players have it in them to go all out all the time. And if you're an NFL player and you're a true professional playing at the highest level, your job is to prove yourself because you know the NFL stands for not for long and the average lifespan of an NFL player is two to three years tops. Yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? So, uh, I don't know. Would you fire the strength and conditioning coach? Yeah, right now. You'd fire him right now? I'd fire him right now. I would shut down practice, do do whatever, get new guys in. I would look at other teams, and I would be saying, you know, here's $10 million. I want the best guy out there. Overpay for him. I mean, yeah, they're a million-dollar organization. They can afford to pay somebody $10 million to come in and know how to keep our players safe and unhurt. And I understand, even if you got the best guy, there's still going to be a few injuries, but not what we had like last year. I mean, we had what on our 50 some people on our yeah. last year? Yeah. Ridiculous number. Yeah. You know, I can understand one or two getting injured, right. but not at this rate that it's gone. Right. No, I 100% agree. And, and here, here's a guy from Facebook. If, you, hey, if you're on Facebook, get yourself a YouTube account and subscribe to me so they'll be in for a Beast Rider family giveaways. Um, but thank you for tuning in from Facebook. He said that has something to do with the individual training. Yes, that does. That also plays a role. But to be honest with you, I think it falls more on the coaching staff because whether or not these players train in the offseason, that's on them. They need an offseason to recover. OK, now, again, I'm in the game. I know. These players need time to recover because from the grueling season that they had, you know, especially in a deep playoff run or if they make the playoffs, they're going to need that extra time for the recovery phase of that training program to go ahead and refresh and uh, reset the engine, so to speak, for the upcoming season, up upcoming year. What's going to happen is if you don't get that and then you go straight into the strength and conditioning and you trust that strength and conditioning coach to get you right and the strength and conditioning coach, first, first thing I ask is, hey, have you been training in the offseason? Yes or no? Yeah, I've been kind of lifting weights. Okay, how's your diet? Oh, my diet's been horrible. Okay, cool. So um, have you been doing any cardio to kind of, you know, 
you got to kind of gauge that. Like what, where, where's your work capacity at? Okay. So the, there's a thing called work capacity. So from there, now you're customizing your workouts according to each player's lifestyle, right? Cause your lifestyle is different from my lifestyle. If I was to train with Alden Smith or Chris Culliver or Aaron Lynch, we would go ahead and we would say, okay, well, they're definitely different positions on the field, right? So we'd be, di we'd be doing different, um, different bodies of work, different workouts. But aside from that, you know, they all have different lifestyles, right? So it's kind of like, where do you take it by a case by case player on a, a player by player basis and be like, okay, so Trent Williams, okay, we know what you're getting with Trent Williams, right? You he he's fine. He's a he know he has his own routine. I'm gonna leave him alone. I'm not gonna touch him. But for a guy like Tervarius Moore, for a guy like Justin School, if they're coming into me and be like, Yeah, I've been working out in the offseason. Okay, did you have some kind of strength and conditioning coach, or were you just kind of doing things on your own? I was kind of doing things on my own. Oh, where did you go? I went to the local 24 hour fitness, okay, which a lot of the NFL players do. Okay, a lot of Niners. Okay, cool. Okay, so were you you weren't doing any cardio? Were you doing any strength training? Yeah, were, were you lifting heavy or were you do what are you mixing it up? What were you doing? So I can kind of have some kind of a starting point to see, okay, where you are now and where you need to be by X, Y, Z, right? These are things that need to take place. And I'm not sure that these con these discussions are taking place when you're sitting down with each individual player because, one, it takes a lot of work. So isn't it better? It's kind of like taking a Group X class and instead of getting one-on-one -on -one training from me, I'm training 30 different players all at the same time but still getting more money, right? Because the more money I get from each head, that's more money in my pocket, and it's easier for me to train these guys. Okay, now we're going to do a bicep curl. Okay, this is how we do a bicep curl. And then you have 30 people doing it and sending that one-on-one -on -one training. I think maybe there should be more eyes on the you know coaching staff in terms of getting more people in so they can kind of have those discussions. Like, hey, all right, you handle the positional unit with the wide receivers. You handle the positional unit with the defensive backs. You handle the positional units on the offensive defensive line. Now you're formulating your game plan according to not only functionality purposes and what they do off on the field, but also the diet off the field. Cause odds are they're going to be eating the same types of foods, right? Well, shouldn't, shouldn't like a lineman eat different than say a defensive back or a quarterback. They should eat different in terms of calories. But again, it comes down to like the macronutrients, the proteins, fats, and carbohydrates and what works best for each body. Because again, some people are more, Insulin, uh, you know, insulin plays a huge role, right? You know, you spike your insulin levels up. So some people are insulin resistant. You know, they could be diabetic or pre-diabetic and run in their family. So there's a lot of history involved in that. Um, you got to know. I was diabetic, even though there I've got go. mine under control and gone now. But right. Um, well, I'm glad. I'm glad you did that. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> it's easy to do. Stay away from carbs. Stay away from carbs, dude. That's the way. That's how. It, stay away from starch, right? Starch turns into sugar. Stay right? away from white, basically. There you go. Stay away from white. Yeah. Uh, so that's basically a, what needs to take place. And, and again, like I'm not there. I'm not saying this is the end all, be all, and what Beast Rider says because he knows. But I do know, and I can tell you right now. Don't be surprised if two or three players, or one or two players. No, oh, two to three players. Screw it. There's like, there's like what, 90 people on camp right now? Two to three players go down the injury, right? Now, in the next week, like I'm saying the next week. So here we are on June 8th on a Tuesday. Next Tuesday, I, I mean, hate, hate to, I'm going to say one at least one or two players are going to go down the injury and be lost yeah. for, for the season. But yet I'm watching Tampa Bay and never hear about an injury. Green Bay Packers. Yeah, never hear about injuries, really. All right, what about the Pittsburgh Steelers? Not lately have I heard about injuries. Right. And who do they have there as a first-round pick? Najee Harris. And what's the knock on him? He has too much tread on his tires. He might get injured. I don't think he's going to get injured because, again, he's going to the Pittsburgh Steelers. They got good trainers, good, uh, good uh, strength and conditioning coaches there. Yeah, exactly. So uh, – I don't know. I don't know. What else is on your mind, man? This is this is kind of getting old. Nothing, it's, just it's, this, Andrew. Andrew, it's, it's, I'm just tired of it. Me too. Me too. Um, Keith Harding says, incorporate yoga or hot yoga into your off-season training program. Yes, I spoke about this yesterday, how hot yoga and what's called Bikram yoga is really good for stretching and mobility and flexion and all that. And it really prevents injury because that's something that you need to do. However, a lot of players don't do yoga. If you guys remember, there's a guy by the name of Tony Parrish who played for the San Francisco 49ers over the course of the years. He actually trained as a yoga instructor here in Santa Clara. And uh, how do I know this? Well, because I'm in the game. Um, so Tony Parrish really believes that yoga helped him 
you know, transitioned to the NFL and really helped his recovery phase. So yoga does actually play a role. However, that's not the end all be all. In fact, I would take it a step further because a lot of players do not like doing yoga. They do not like stretching. So if I was their strength and conditioning coach and I knew this, I'm not going to force them to do something they don't want to do because probably probably they're not going to do it when, you know, behind closed doors anyways. They're going to do whatever the hell they want. They're, they get paid to play. They don't get paid to stretch. So I would say, you know what? All right. Can we compromise and meet in the middle? Yes, coach. Okay. I want you after every workout to go ahead and hit the sauna and the steam room for at least 15 minutes. Could you do that? And just stretch out, man. I know it's hot in there, but just I love the sauna. Right? It's it good. Loosens it loosens you up, makes you feel good. There you go. Detoxes your body, right? Yeah. Gets out the toxins, uh, really helps your skin out. And it, it it's just all around good for you, right? It, like yeah. you said, it helps with the blood flow. Blood flow prevents injury, right? If you have a healthy blood flow, it prevents injury. And when that's what happens when players get cold. Now we don't know what happened. Who knows if Justin school or Tarverius Moore, being the backups that they are, were just inserted into lineup. And on the first play on that drive, they got, they went down. Well, the word is uh, the offensive lineman was starting all week. Because right. Trent Williams ain't there. Right. Uh, and Tavares Moore was also starting the whole week in camp. For Jawaski Tart. Yeah. yeah. For Jawaski Tart, who's out right. with the injury. So. But what I'm saying is, what if they stop, you know, because they always, well, I guess because well, you guys aren't practice. So basically, there's their stop time, and then they rest, and then they talk, and then they reset. They rest and talk, and then they reset. So my thinking is, if they were doing that, and then they came out of the reset, did he go down there? Like it's just, it's it's crazy, man. See, see, Tom, crazy. Tom Brady had one ACL in his what twenty two year, twenty three year career now. Right. Get the guy that trains him in the off season, or or yeah. works with. You know, do something. I mean, pay him twenty million dollars to come in. Cost money, cost money, and again, a billion dollar company. A billion dollar company. Injuries happen, but at the end of the day, if you don't want damaged goods on your roster, you want a cash cow. All right, people who are going to see the field are going to be the cash cows. Right, Jimmy Garoppolo going down the, to injury. I mean, the list goes on. I mean, Jeff Wilson going down to injuries. I mean, Debo Samuel going down to injuries. Is George Kittle going down to injuries? Yes, he had an injury too, but that was the most very injury prone. Not big, bad, bad injuries, but he gets nagging injuries. Right. Really bad. Right. So, I mean, it happens. I understand that NFL is a contact sport and injuries do happen. But at the end, end of the day, it happens more often to the 49ers than any other NFL team, it seems like. That's why you don't let the fourth Buckner go. There you That's go. That's why you don't let Fred Warner go. There you go. They just don't get injured. They know how to take care of their own bodies. That's a huge reason why. And people talk about, you know, oh, well, it was a good – no, it wasn't. It was, it was probably – I think losing to Forrest Buckner was just as bad or almost as bad as losing Charles Haley. I trade. think it's the Babe Ruth trade of football. There you go. Yeah. There so. you go. All right. Well, thank right. you so much, Michael. I appreciate you it. Yep. All right, buddy. Take it easy. All right, Eric. So it's according to uh, Grant. Season's over and Kyle needs to be fired because we lost two backup players. We weren't allowed to make roster. Yes, exactly what I've been saying. Uh, Keith Harding says, along with Marcel Harris, uh, Jason Elzer, they need to fire all of the training staff and everyone else responsible for players' health. This is absolutely ridiculous. My man, Jason Ellsworth from the Beast Rider family. Uh, Eric Sully says, we can't practice and coach scared, man. Sorry, I know these injuries suck, but we can bubble wrap. We can't, but we can bubble wrap the players or we cannot bubble wrap the players. I think we cannot bubble wrap the players. I agree with you. You can't play scared, but at the end of the day, you still got to take it slowly and cautious, especially if these injuries are reoccurring with the same coaching staff in place. Just my take. We got Will on the line. Will the Thrill with the Batman Mobile T-shirt. <laughs> What's going on, man? What's going on, bro? How you doing? doing? Pretty good. How about yourself? Well, just talking about this. We're going to have Mike Schumann on at 11 a.m., so I'm going to hop on this, um, do this live stream for another, I don't know, 40 minutes and then hop off. And then we're doing another live stream with Mike Schumann, former San Francisco 49er Super Bowl winning wide receiver. Mike Schumann played with Joe Montana and the likes of Bill Walsh. So that's always a fun one. That's always a lit one. You guys can go ahead and hop on the show and talk to him about that. Um, but what's on your mind, bro? I'm trying to figure out what is the problem to the San Francisco 49 of injuries. Like, they need to get down to the root of the problem. Me personally, I think the training staff needs to be fired. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I trust me. Trust me. I, I like I said, I talk to a lot of the strength and conditioning coaches, not in that, not just in the NFL, 
because that's probably the primary, but even college and, and even high, some of these high school guys know what they're talking about too. Um, it's interesting to point out why these injuries are reoccurring because your job as a strength and conditioning coach is to make sure these guys see the field so that these injuries do not occur. So you got to get their muscle memory right, right? And if they're pushing themselves too hard, you as a coach, now this falls on the coach and Kyle Shanahan needs to say, you know what, let's take this player out a little bit. Let's give him some rest time. I know he needs first team rest, but we know what we're getting. It's only what OT It's not even training camp yet. I mean, I don't get it. Like, it, it's just it's, – it's very, very weird. Like, it, it, it's just – I mean, words can't even explain of why this is happening. Like, our whole roster was decimated by injuries last year, and now we just – the offseason just now started with OTAs, and we having injuries already. Like, I don't get it. Like, is it yeah. is it is it the diet that, that they're providing or the way, the way that they're practicing? I mean, I don't understand how – you know, I don't understand what they're doing. Like, I mean, see, this is my problem with Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch. They they do it with the players. When players are getting hurt, they stick. They they keep they keep sticking with them. They keep holding their hand. They 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 try to keep them on the team. They you know this that and the third holding their hand, and they're doing the same thing with this training staff. Mm -hmm. This training staff, we can see that this training staff is not is not performing at its high level of keeping players on the field. Yeah, it's poor. And they still trying to hold on. I, I would have fired them last year. Yeah. But they, but they I mean, I, I don't understand, man. I just don't get it. I really don't. It, well, it goes back to, I think, two words I'm going to bring up, okay? Narcissism and nepotism, all right? Nepotism mm -hmm. meaning it's not what you know, it's who you know, okay? It's not what you know always, it's who you know. That's why you see in these NFL coaching, and this is not just the Fortnite, it's just the NFL in general. A lot of time, coaches follow other coaches. When one when, when offensive coordinator or defensive coordinator becomes a head coach, who does he bring on? Whoever the offensive coordinator or defensive coordinator, whoever their positional coach now become coordinators, he brings his whole platoon with him, right? That's just how it is. Uh, I don't know what's going on with San Francisco. Well, I do know. I, I agree with you. I think they should be fired. I think the strength and conditioning coaches should be fired. And, and, and the reason I say that is because, again, if two to three players go down, like I said, here we are on a Tuesday. Two to three players go down next week. It ain't fool's gold, bro. I mean, I, it, it, you know it's going to happen, and you know it's going to happen. I'm calling it. I don't care. I'll put it up on my – two to three players are going to get hurt next year. Or the, uh, next week, sorry. Mm -hmm. Next Tuesday or next week sometime. I mean, I, I mean, I t I, it, it goes back to a guy that I know that we had uh, – during the Harbaugh area, uh, era, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Um, he was a, um, I don't know if he was Asian or, um, yeah, it's Mark. It's a good friend of mine, Mark Uyama. Uy. Yeah. yeah, good friend of mine. He's now with he, the Minnesota Vikings. Now he would now when he was 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 head of the training staff during the Harbaugh era, players wasn't getting hurt. Yeah, we, they weren't getting hurt. All I gotta why, say, why all hurt? I gotta oh, yes, no, you're right, you're right, Mark Uyama who the players called him Ui, was very good at his job. The best. It's, it's not me being biased because we're boys. It's just it is what it is. Oh, he was. I mean, to me, he was because the player wasn't getting hurt. And the players will have his back. The Bro, players will exactly. definitely have his back. I mean, I mean, he, he was a perfect guy, you know, with, with the organization. When he yep. when he was here, when Harbaugh was here, with no players getting hurt. Maybe one or two players got hurt, but that yep. was it. Like every, every week in and week out, we had all our players on the field every week. They had no problems, no problems on the field during game. Right. They hadn't had any problems in the, uh, like at practice. None of that. So I mean, now, now look at the Minnesota Vikings. Where are their injuries right now? I, I haven't heard nothing. There you go. Isn't that interesting? Right. I mean, I, I, I'm not hearing. I'm not hearing about any team having multiple injuries right now. Yeah. It, it's always us. I mean, I, I I don't know. I think I don't know if it's the weather. I don't know no. if like it's the diet. Or now I heard no. that 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 the Forty Nine Stadium is was built on top of a sacred burial ground. Is that true? I uh, I don't know if that's true. I ain't never seen some go any ghosts when I was there alone. Okay. So I've never felt any bad vibes or anyone watching me. I, now you tell me I don't want to go there alone now. 
<laughs> I, I'm scared of that stuff, bro. Uh, I didn't know about that. You say you say it gets cursed if it was. Now I don't. I don't agree with that, man. Because I don't know, man. It's not so much I don't agree or I don't believe in it. You know, who knows? It could be true. But it, it, it got to be something because it, I mean, <sighs> it don't make any sense to have all our in injuries last year and then we starting up again and already having three people down already. Jeff Wilson Jr. just in school and Tavares more. Yeah. The training staff has to be addressed. John, Kyle and John has to do something about this. Like they really do. They need to address it right now before it gets worse. Yeah. But no, you're right. You're right. Uh, we have Don Lovato from the Beast Rider family says, maybe the player's diet and condition needs to change. This is ridiculous, Beast Rider. Yeah, it's, it is ridiculous. And, you know, their diets, I'll be honest with you, okay? I'm not going to put names out there. I went on John Jay's, uh, who's in here in the live stream. I didn't even know they went to Vegas. I'm sorry. I said, I'm pretty sure they're at Encore Beach Club. Uh, and then uh, for the day party, and then some guy said, yeah, they're actually at Encore Beach Club day party. I know a lot what's going on with the players off the field, okay? Let me tell you something about their diets and condition. I'm not going to put names in it. A lot of them go to Chick-fil-A off First Street. I know this. They'd be posting stuff. Uh, Chick-fil-A, and they tell me, Chick-fil-A, Taco Bell, Panda Express. What else? What's the three ones around Levi Stadium that they – and I always um, – Oh, Chipotle sometimes, but mostly those four places. That's where they're at, you know, and that's a lot of fast food. That's a lot of saturated fats. That's not good for your diet. Now, if you're freaking George Kittle and you can eat Panda Express and still be a first team all pro, I don't care. I'd buy you Panda Express and have your own Panda Express. If you want the orange chicken, shoot, I'll buy you all the orange chicken you can eat, bro. But at the end of the day, not everybody's built like George Kittle. Not everybody trains like George Kittle. Mm -hmm. So he's burning more calories than what he's putting in his body. So he's still at a deficit, which means he's still burning fat, gaining muscle, being a MPS muscle protein synthesis self builder. A mm -hmm. lot of these players are not like that. So diet does play a role. Conditioning also plays a role. I'm not sure how conditioned these players are when they walk into Levi stadium, getting ready for OTAs. I would say half of them probably don't even train. They take, they take that whole rest week off or that whole period off, which is fine. But just be ready to know if you're a strength and conditioning coach that that's where their starting point is. You can't expect you, you know, who's been training 30 days a week or sorry, 30 days a month, every single day of the month. And then having me come on who trains every other day to be on the same page. Well, right. It doesn't work that way, bro. It, it, doesn't, doesn't, work. it doesn't work that way. Um, how big of a loss is Tarvarius Moore in your eyes and just in school? School, I mean, losing losing school isn't really a big deal. I mean, he he's like he's like at the bottom of the dip chart. I know he had some playing time in 2019. And he did very. Yeah. Well. I mean, you know, I, I I I think as of right now, you know, he's like at the bottom of the dip chart. So I think he's not a big loss. Not to vary is more. It it is somewhat of a loss. Uh, he does have talent. Uh, he does have issues that he needs to address on the field like taking angles you know you know he had he had a bad problem with pursuing good angles uh right. here uh but he did he did well you know he he, he contributed in the super bowl you know he had i think he had about one or two picks i think it was one um but i mean i mean he, he is someone you know yeah. that can be beneficial to this team so that is that is a you know that is somewhat of a loss and jeff wilson jr is a huge loss uh because he's the goal line guy like yeah down down the one yard line he's the one that can punch it in for right him. um so hopefully you know we can get him back you know later on during the season um but but yeah but yeah um jeff wilson is a huge huge loss but you know that's why kyle and john got two running backs out the draft kyle understand kyle understand that what's happening right now is happening right now and that's why he did what he did by um beefing up the running back position and um the o-line um, you know, you, you know, just like and he, he making he making all, more offseason moves like getting Tony Jefferson and all this. You know, the you know the dollars the dollar store shopping players they do. You know, that's what they known for. That's what they do. They, you know, we don't never we don't never make big splashes. We don't you know we don't never go to the mall. We always yeah. go to the dollar store. Uh, you know, so I mean, but yeah, um, but you know, Kyle Kyle and John are uh, beefing up uh, this roster uh, just in case this happens. So yeah, it's. It's crazy, dude. I don't know. I don't know. It's just every week we're talking about an injury. You know what? It's more like a common theme. It's more the norm than the exception these days with the 49ers. Like we, we expect, okay, we expect these things to happen now. And we're like, ah, just another injury. 
Yeah. It, it, like, 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 oh, it's expected. Not like we like it doesn't matter because it's a huge deal, but it's almost like we expect it. Like, it's almost like if someone doesn't get hurt, we're like, wow, no one got hurt. Holy <laughs> cow, this is our season. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's so weird how that works out because under Harbaugh, this no, and again. I'm having, if you guys are just uh, tuning in, I'm having Mike Schumann on at 11 a.m. So just in an hour, we're going to hop, I'm going to hop off this live stream, hop back on at 11 a.m., have my man, Mike Schumann. You guys know who he is. He was on the first live stream, talked about Joe Montana, Bill Walsh. He played with those guys and also was a Super Bowl winning wide receiver from Florida State and also is in the Florida State Hall of Fame. So going back to it, we're also talking about Jim Harbaugh. Tomorrow we have Emika Nolion, who played under Jim Harbaugh while at Stanford. And he's going to talk about Jim Harbaugh and what he brought to the table. So it's going to be interesting. I'm going to talk about this. I'm going to talk about how Harbaugh trained his players as opposed to Kyle Shanahan. I think this is something that's going to be interesting because, again, when Jim Harbaugh was there during three straight and at three straight deep playoff runs, three straight NFC championship games, basically unscathed as far as, far as injuries are concerned, the common denominator is Mark Uyama. Yeah, yeah, that because I'm just I, I was just about to say now on the Harbaugh, Harbaugh those guys that practice Harbaugh drove them to the ground. He wanted to make sure these guys was, was on on they you you know what come Sunday and he drove them to the ground. But the thing is, they never got hurt because of that guy. That guy that that guy was the head of training staff, mm -hmm. and those guys was practicing hard every yep. day. For Harbaugh and them guys never got hurt. Not yep. you're right. You're right. Um, well, thank you so much, Will, for tuning in. I hope you're hopping on the live stream at 11 a.m. If you can make it with Mike Schumann. And then tomorrow at 3.30 p.m., we're having Amika Noli. He was the number two rated fullback coming out of high school, top 100 recruit. Um, one of Harbaugh's favorites, actually, before he went down to a, well, career-ending injury. And he's going to talk about that. So thank you for so much for tuning in, man. I appreciate the love. Oh, not, not all of them, man. Thanks for having me on. All right, Playboy. All right, later. All right, we have Fortnite's Ultimate Report. John Jay back on. John Jay, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Uh, thanks for coming on uh, yesterday on my show. I appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Absolutely, bro. What's on your mind today as it comes to the San Francisco 49ers? I'm going to pause for a second and hold my emotions and say this. I don't know what's going on with the organization. You know, like in after the 2018 season, they fire the training staff. 2019, you know, that year we went to the Super Bowl. You know, Kittle got hurt. He missed some few games. Mm -hmm. Kyle, Kyle Juszczyk got hurt. He missed about four to five games. Yep. Uh, uh, Kawan Alexander, he missed half the season. But when he was on the field, he was really good. And when he wasn't on the field, the defense suffered a little bit. So we've had injuries, not, not just – what happened last year, but in 2019 or the year we went to the Super Bowl, 2018, Jimmy Garoppolo was the first guy suffered an ACL injury on a non-contact play. Mm -hmm. And and many other players as well were on the injury list. I I, lo I saw the, ro the roster of 2018. There was a lot of people on that injury list. In 2017, Kyle Shanahan's and John Lynch's first season, a lot of injuries that year. 2016, when we were 2-14, and 14, injuries. 2015, injuries. 2014, uh, Harbaugh's last season when Patrick Willis and a lot of players retired, you know, you know, so I'm not, I'm not trying to say this because, you know, I miss Candlestick Park, but Candlestick Park, for those who don't remember, the Giants used to play there. You know, those teams in the 90s and the 80s, they played on a half the year on a baseball infield. And right. Was, was, did, did those players in the 80s, they played in a much tougher era, a much tougher time. They won Super Bowls in that crappy field. As a baseball fan, I went to watch Giants games at that mm -hmm. stadium. It was a crappy field. The weather was horrible. The players who played in, in the Giants in the morning, they suffered through that. But it was never like this great new stadium. It's a state-of-the-art stadium that they paid a lot of money for it. In 2019, right. in week two, an NFL official from the NFL visited – Levi Stadium for whatever the reason, and they told Jed York and the executives and the grounds crew, this turf that you have is going to hurt your players. Did Jed York ever do anything about it? Nobody wants to talk about that. So I'm sick. No, they, 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 no, they changed. They changed it because I was there. I was there. They yeah. uh, they actually 
had to they, they actually fixed it they fixed so, it anyway as, as a 49er fan you know like i, I know there are a lot of them uh, just like the the previous guy who, who was saying it what is it going to take for the 49ers to realize because everyone talks about this team as a super bowl mm -hmm. team you know it's it's a good team right now but what happens if, if we start off week one and injuries happen, injuries happen, and we continue to get hurt? And even hopefully this does not happen. You know, say Trey Lance has to take it because Jimmy got hurt and then Trey Lance gets hurt. Yeah. You no, know, you know, we have to start realizing that uh, even though OTAs are very important, they're, they're, you know, these players are trying to get their bodies back in the shape. I am now a little bit worried what's going to happen uh, the rest of this week all, uh, leading up to training camp. So I, I've lost faith again in Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch. I, I, now I understand why they brought in Tony Jefferson, because maybe they're not releasing the full injury reports on all these players. It always happens when there's a press conference. You know, these reports come out, and I don't know what's going on. And as a 49er fan, and there are many who are also watching it, we're, we're probably the same way, what has to happen? Because if this is true, I've been hearing this the past week, one of the medical guys, I don't know if he's the, the head dude, has a hockey background. They're not playing hockey. They're playing football. So if that's true, that doesn't make sense to me anyway. I mean, hockey background, I think anybody who's in a sports field, how you train certain players definitely play has an impact. Now, hockey is not the same as football, obviously, but how you prepare and how you prep, it's basically – one of the same in terms of how, how you can kind of get these guys ready for whatever it is you're trying to accomplish. So it goes back to, again, you know, having the work capacity, you know, whether you're doing strength endurance training, where you're doing hyper, uh, hypertrophy, uh, hypertrophy um, strength training, or what are you doing? Um, you know, uh, more reps, uh, you know, more reps with a smaller, smaller weight class. So it just depends on exactly what you're trying to accomplish. I don't necessarily think it has to do with the background of him being a, a hockey, you know, strength and conditioning coach now transitioning to the NFL. I just think one is all the same. It's all the same to me in terms of it falls on you to get these guys ready. And if you can't do it, someone else is going to do it, right? Someone else has to do it because that's what you get paid to do. If you're Jed York and you're seeing this and you're paying a guy X amount of dollars and your players are getting hurt, well, that falls on you as a strength and conditioning coach. It doesn't fall on anyone else. It might fall on Kyle Shanahan because he's the one that's pushing these players. He's the one that uh, has his practice program in place. So it falls on him as well. But ultimately, it falls on the strength and conditioning coach to be working with the head coach and being like, okay, what are we doing this week to prepare so I can prepare for my players so when they do what you ask them to do, they're hitting it running without the fear of getting injured. And so we can minimize the risk of some of these reoccurring injuries because, you know, XYZ players coming off a torn ACL, XYZ is coming off a high ankle sprain. So we really don't want them doing too much. And if you do decide to kind of run some naked bootlegs with, let's say, Jimmy Garoppolo, who's coming off a high ankle sprain, well, okay, that's cool, but you're going to have to give me some time so I can work on his lateral agility. See, these are things that, you know, it's kind of common sense um, in the fitness industry in terms of exactly how to prepare each player because they're tailor-made to do specific things and the functionality of the decision that's being required and what they're asked to do. But at the end of the day, again, I don't think it has to do with his background as much as it is it falls on him as the fall guy because ultimately he's getting paid to keep these guys on the field. And if they're damaged goods, what's the point of paying this guy? Right. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't make sense, man. It just, it really doesn't make sense. And it's, it's ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. No, I am interested to see how they bounce back from that because, you know, Dustin Perry is the head strength and conditioning coach. So Dustin Perry, it, it falls on him. It falls on Aaron Hill. It falls on Mike uh, Nicolini. I mean, it falls on those guys to get it done. Um, I will tell you this. <laughs> one of my good friends who I grew up with, when I mean grew up with, I mean, I've known this guy since sixth grade, is working with the San Francisco 49ers on the physical therapy portion. And he, I'm not going to name the company, obviously, but they're working on a deal um, to get these guys game ready. Right. And I will tell you this. I will say. <laughs> It's, it's just, it's, it doesn't surprise me. I just had this discussion with him yesterday, you know, at the gym, in the sauna. All right. And he's like, Hey, beast, what's going on? And then, you know, we were talking back and forth. And so, yeah, he, I, I'm just going to, I'm going to leave it at this. 
the Niner strength and conditioning coach needs some help, especially the physical therapy side of it. The physical therapy side, the rest, ice, you know, the, the rice method, you know, where you rest, ice, compression, and elevate, you know, all these things have to play a role in the recovery phase of doing these strenuous workouts. That's why you need a physical therapist to come in and kind of help these guys out in their recovery phase so they don't get injured. That's all I gotta say about that. I'm getting I'm getting heated because it's it, it's kind of common sense, dude. Mm -hmm. Like, why are you waiting till now to hire somebody to be someone's physical therapist? You know what I mean? Shouldn't this been already streamlined? I mean, you had throughout the whole COVID time to kind of get this straightened out. I don't know. That's just me. It's me. Yeah. I know it, it, it's so weird, you know, like, like you know, like you, you, you've told me and your audience, you know, you, you're a fitness dude. I see your TikToks, you know, your workouts. So I know, you know, you, you train. So, you know, like if, if it comes from your mouth, you know, you, you understand this. You know, you've also told us that, you know, players from 49ers have asked you to, you know, get them, you know, ready. So one of the things that I don't know where they're getting at, you know, and also, you know, you know, you know, like nearby Santa Clara, you know, like. Uh, um, near Santa Clara, uh, you have Stanford, you know, uh, medical. I don't know why they don't reach out to those. You know, it, it's it's a really good program. You know, you know to get you know the to get those people because you know it, it's a good school, good medical program. So mm -hmm. you know when you're in in, in in the Silicon Bay area area, there are a lot of great medical people that you can you know go hire who know right. you know body all that stuff, which is so weird. And I don't know where uh, Kyle Shanahan or whoever hires the medical staff where they come from. I'm not trying to say these guys are horrible at their job because they, they are training professional athletes. Right. So they, they must know something. Right. You know, we can criticize them because, you know, we don't know. We don't do the same thing that these, you know, players do. But it, it, it goes back to Jimmy Garoppolo. Like, it's so weird how this guy, ACL injury, has a, you know, OK 2019 that has two high ankle sprains. And yeah. we, we, we talk a lot of smack about him. It's true. We, we talk smack about him. But when you're seeing now uh, Jeff Wilson Jr., meniscus, going to mm -hmm. be out for quite some time, uh, Tarverius Moore and uh, the school, you know, something is not going on that doesn't make any sense to be more polite. Because, you know, I do want to be a little bit more, you know, upset. But at the end of the day, you know, like something needs to, like, happen. Because if, say, you know, Trey Lance starts and then he gets hurt, mm -hmm. then it's not, oh, you know, something has to really, really uh, scratch your head and realize what's really going on. Why these good players? Because Fred Warner, he, he he plays all the time. He doesn't get hurt. Right. You know, what's Fred Warner doing versus the players who are getting hurt? So it's so weird in, so, in my mind. So let's just break it down. Uh, the strength and conditioning coach is Dustin Perry, for those who don't know. Dustin Perry was an assistant he was even the, the head strength and conditioning coach. He was the assistant strength and conditioning coach with the Minnesota Gophers. All right. He was the assistant strength and conditioning coach with the Minnesota Gophers, which is good. Uh, not knocking, but he wasn't the head strength and conditioning coach. He then goes on to the 49ers and becomes the same title, the assistant head, head, uh, head strength and conditioning coach there before getting the title of strength and conditioning coach this year. All right. So this, again, the common denominator to me is, Here's, a, here's some food for thought. Under the Jim Harbaugh era, it was Mark Uyama all the way through. One strength and condition coach all the way through. With the San Francisco 49ers and Kyle Shanahan, it's a game of musical chairs with a strength and condition coach. And that can impact the players. That can impact their on-field performance. And that can impact the higher risk of injury because these workout programs are not tailored the same from one coach to the next. That is why... I think more injuries are going to occur because, again, it's like Alex Smith who has so many offensive coordinators during the early parts of his career. How can he sustain any part of success if he's learning new offenses every single year? Same thing with workout programs. How can these players get ready and fully expect what to expect in the upcoming season when you have a new strength and conditioning coach and a high turnaround and you're like, dude, what are we doing this now? So now I have to retrain my muscle memory to do these types of stretches when I don't even know what these stretches – I've never done this in my life. That's where the issue is going to come into play. And that's why I say it. I guarantee two or three players probably going to get hurt next uh, this, uh, definitely next week for sure. For sure. Mm -hmm. 
for sure. Uh, thank you, Frank the Boss, for the super chat and super sticker. Mahalo, mahalo. If you like the chat, like the channel, and like the Beast Rider family movement, we are striving to push here on YouTube. Consider sending me a super chat. Thank you so much, Frank the Boss. He was the Beast Rider family giveaway winner as well um, two weeks ago, I believe. Uh, Fat Albert says some yogurt. What is he talking about? Yo, I don't know what yogurt means. Uh, Lavarius Monster says good vibes. Uh, Fat Albert says, man, we can't win for losing. We can't win for losing. Damn. Um, Tarverius says game ready. What the, what the <laughs> Tommy Huxley says 2020 all over again. Hakeem gaming video says, hi. Uh, five, 49, 42 Savage says fire them all or screw football. He also says, I expect more injuries. Don Lovato says, um, or Tommy Huxley says, I'm done, man. This is getting ridiculous. Alejandro. Malanche, how are you doing today? I said, I'm from the Beast Rider family. He says, I am not worried. Jalen Moore was drafted this year for guard, but he's expected as a tackle. We can have him play both positions this year. The versatile alignment. I like your uh, optimism. Um, Tommy Huxley says, the injuries aren't done. This is the beginning. Yes, I agree. I agree. I agree, man. I agree. So anyways, um, that's pretty much wraps up this. Um, we have Hakeem Gaming video. Um, he was trying to hop into the live stream, but um, is there anything else you want to say before I let you go? Uh, that's it. Just, you know, uh, you know, yeah. So at the end of the day, whatever the 49ers, you know, hopefully they, they you know, this is a wake up call for them because if they don't right. and say we get like a, a more serious injury with, with a star player. Right. And, you know, so hopefully they do something because say next week, you know, they have another press conference. Oh, Fred Warner, uh, he suffered ACL as well. He's going to be at, you know, so that's, we don't want to hear, you know, something right. more like that because it's a various more in school. They're not bad, you know, they're, right. but they're really good depth pieces. Right. And we need all the depth we can because now we're just losing, losing more right. play. So that's all I want to say. But thanks very much, man. All right, man. Take it easy, man. Thank you so much for tuning in, John Jay. Uh, we have Hakeem Gaming video on. Hakeem, how are you doing today? If you unmute your mic, bro, I can't hear you because you have to unmute your mic. So if you're here, you're obviously here. You have to unmute your mic, buddy, uh, for us to hear you. So there's a mic icon. You're going to have to unmute yourself so we can go ahead and uh, listen to you and listen to what you have to say. Okay. He, he, he chimed out. All right. Uh, Waruna Pereira says, this is pure torture when it comes to injuries. It is like Bill's losing four Super Bowls in a row. What a time to be a fan. Yes. Waruna Pereira is not a lifelong Niner fan. He definitely became a Niner fan and uh, Waruna Pereira, good guy. Met up with this guy at his house, met his whole family. Um, very, very nice and sweet family. Uh, uh, one time out there in Sacramento, chilling with him for a little bit. Uh, Fork Tail, that's what we do here in the Beast Rider family. We actually come to your home. Like, literally, this is what you're doing. You guys are in my home. I'm in your home. We're doing this. All right. Fork Tail Devil 38J says, Oh my God, it's starting already. No. <laughs> Hakeem Gaming Video says, That's me. Yep, that was you. I couldn't hear you are. Okay. Hakeem Gaming Video. Okay, I think your your device is not connected right now. Um, so you have to have your mic on so I can add you into the stream, my man. Um, Lunar Mystic says, I'm losing. Oh, here we go. We have Hakeem. Hakeem, how are you doing today? Can you hear me? Hello? Is he there? Uh, uh Hello, can you hear me? Uh, Is he there? Hello? Hello? Okay. How are you? Yeah. H how are you doing? Good. Are you there, bud? Yeah. What's going on? What's on your mind? Okay. Uh, I think we lost him. So Don Lovato says, I've never heard of any of this as a longtime Niners fan. Unbelievable. Yeah, it's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. It's really, really bad. So, um, yeah, I don't know what's going on here. A uh, lot, of, lot of stuff that's going on here, but... All right, so it looks like I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this live stream. If you have yet to subscribe to my channel, please please do so in the lower right-hand corner of your screen. 
as you stay up to date on all things beast in real time. I'm just going to go ahead and put up the banner here for all you guys so you guys can go ahead and do that. It's right here. It's already there for you. Um, I'm going to be hopping on a live stream in about 40 minutes. Well, 11 a.m., so it's 50, 48 minutes. And we will have Mike Schumann on our live stream. This will be a live call-in show, so stay tuned for that. Thank you so much for tuning into this podcast. I hope everyone is doing well. Don't get injured. Beast Rider, out.